a good opportunity really today and thanks for having me uh, to, to present today and talk about kind of all things SIMSPA, what's new uh, in light of the Sport England guidance and uh, the kind of new policies and procedures around that as well. Um, but like, like Laura said, there's opportunities today to ask any questions that you've got. Um, we do have a chat box. I think uh, my colleague Maddie will be contributing some supportive documentation um, as I'm going through the slides that we've got today. Uh, have a look at them. Uh, obviously, the webinar is being recorded as well, so you've got that. But if you have got questions as well, do feel free to pop them in the chat box and we'll work through them as well at the end. But um, roughly probably 45 to 50 minutes today with the questions. So uh, looking forward to speaking to you. But um, essentially, yeah, what we'll cover today is, is probably fivefold, I'd say, is, is first and foremost, SIMSPA, who we are, uh, what we do. And I think most importantly, it's about what that means for you. And um, we'll talk about our different kind of partnership types, our different membership categories as well. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to get a really good picture of, of where you sit within that SIMSPA framework, should you wish to kind of move forward uh, with any memberships or opportunities within the wider sector. Um, the Sport English strategy is, is hugely ap applicable now, um, certainly now more than ever, um, particularly in light of the COVID-19 guidance. So I think what we'll do is, is we'll talk a little bit about what that typically looks like, uh, any changes that have been made, um, and, and we'll be able to go from there as well. So that's a kind of a, a key, and key component of today. Uh, Professionalised in the sector, um, we'll talk a little bit about professional standards, what they are, how they typically work within sport and physical activity and different job roles within the sector. Um, and hopefully you'll get a really good understanding of what's new in sport and physical activity and how you can specialise now in a multitude of different areas. And we'll talk about how that process um, takes place as well. Obviously, SIMSPA member benefits, partner benefits are really important um, when it comes to any kind of affiliation with your chartered body. So we'll go through those as well. And should you wish to get involved further, uh, we've got some next steps as well. So any kind of information that you need from us, we're, we're really available to you. Anyone uh, associated with Active Surrey is a, a massive priority of ours. So anything we can do, um, please do give us, give us a shout with any questions that you've got regarding those next steps as well. Uh, so first and foremost, who we are uh, and what we do and what that means for you ultimately. So put very simply, we are twofold, really. Um, it's the professional developing body um, for sport and physical activity across the entire sector. And we're your sector's chartered institute. So I imagine a lot of you in the audience have probably heard of reps um, or certainly had some sort of work with reps in the past. Reps was previously a professional development body within sport and physical activity. And we do things slightly differently in the sense of we shape professional standards and we serve them as a framework for, for high quality and, and high performance within the sector. We've now come together with UK Coaching and Sport England. And we're that single professional development body now. So when it comes to kind of debugging that uh, confusion around who is your body of support, uh, it's us uh, and we're here, we are here to support you as much as possible uh, in as many ways as possible. With us being your sector's chartered institute, put very simply, it's our opportunity to write those professional standards and we'll go through what they are as the presentation goes on. But, but put very simply, it's, it's about identifying some real clarity with your role um, and your kind of area of expertise within the sector. Those professional standards will be a framework um, to allow you to develop into new areas um, of career, you know, kind of progression, if you like, into sport and physical activity. And we see those standards as a really good opportunity to open up uh, a multitude of availabilities um, for job roles and, and opportunities within sport and obviously physical activity as well. Um, and our goal is, is really simple. It's about maximising the quality of the sport and physical activity workforce. The way we see it, and we'll talk about this in a couple of slides time as well, is that the higher the quality of the entire workforce, the better the experience the public are going to get of our services. The better that is, the more income revenue that our sector sees, the more opportunities that you have as part of that workforce. So our goal is to really commit to, to maximising that quality as well. When you look at us from a professional development body perspective, it's the individuals that we want to support um, to, the, to the highest quality of best practice. We have what we call a chartered status. We'll talk about what that is, what that is in a moment. Um, it's an opportunity for you to recognise for the quality that you've got and, and, the, and the development that you're doing in such a succinct way now uh, that we can really you know, identify and, and highlight some real specifications in your work and what you do. The way we see it is every single individual within sport and physical activity will want to do different things with their career. For us, it's about identifying what it is that you want to do and supporting you to get there moving forward. So please, if you take anything from today's presentation, 
it's about understanding you and understanding the workforce and, and how we can develop you to doing exactly what it is that you want to do within your career. In terms of the Sectors Chartered Institute, obviously we work really hard to, to support organisations, Active Surrey have been brilliant with that as well, um, to receive the highest quality of training. And obviously, hopefully you'll see as the presentation goes on, that those standards are set in stone and it's a, it's a really good opportunity for you to understand that training maps across to those standards. So if it's got a SIMSPA badge on it, it's high quality training. Hopefully gone are the days of a Google search of a, a qualification and you're unsure on how credible it is or what the quality is associated to that. Hopefully now it will be really simple and really structured moving forward to allow you to be in the best possible place to make those decisions about your training and education. And connectivity to the sector is, is massive. Uh, a big part of what we do is kind of why we're here today as well, is connecting you to your active partnership, connecting organisations together to support themselves. Can employers receive training providers that are in line with those standards and, and supporting them to, to develop into a collective partnership? But it's also the individual as well, is we've got loads of individuals that want to be chartered, loads of individuals that need career advice and support. It's about connecting them to individuals in mentoring uh, in a way and um, to allow you to have those opportunities to have those conversations. So the key feature is you're not alone. We want to connect the sector as much as possible uh, to create those opportunities for you. And our vision is, is so simple, really. It's, it's shaping recognition and respect within our sector. But I think the most important part of it is, is everybody's got to want to be a part of it. So from our job and our duty, it's, it's connecting all of our partnership types, which we'll talk about in a moment, from your employers, training providers, your awarding bodies and your higher education. And, and that's all in line with, with the workforce as well, is making sure that you as an individual are heard, listened to and developed and supported moving forward. Um, and that's something that we're, we're hugely committed to doing is, you know, kind of connecting and supporting the entire picture of sport and physical activity. So when we look at the Sport England strategy, and hopefully this will make sense to you as, as to why our purpose is there, um, we at Simspa, um, as we've seen before, there's a, there's a massive kind of emphasis placed now on unity of movement, um, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic, as we've seen that sport and physical activity, it's, it's always been crucial to people's well-being, physically, mentally, psychologically, socially. But the eyes are really on us now. Um, it's, you know, we've, we've proven that good physical health, good psychological health, can, can help and sustain the good quality of life. So the Sport English strategy is all about kind of connecting communities, uh, transforming lives through kind of an ecosystem of support. And the, the kind of main features of it are tackling inequality uh, and tackling kind of health challenges as well. And it's why our active partnerships are so important to what we do and why you as an individual sat here listening to this today is massively important to the bigger picture as well. So hopefully you'll be able to see uh, what that's all about but in essence the sport england strategy is kind of fivefold really as you can see on the screen is that recovery and, and reinvention it's, it's been a tremendously challenging time for our sector at this current moment in time and it will be uh, for the foreseeable future so it's our role to work with sport england at simsper to create opportunities for you to recover and reinvent the profession that you're in reinventing the workforces that you're you're involved in and and you know kind of taking it you know step by step from there really Connecting communities is huge um, and active partnerships are massively important to that. The reason we do that is to provide you with opportunities and um, to develop and, and kind of work really hard with different types of partnership avenues within sport and physical activity. Um, we've got examples of, of positive experiences for children and young people. I think that's always been a huge priority of ours in Sport England is to equip the workforce to dealing with certain population types. Uh, health and well-being, probably the biggest facet of that at this moment in time, is, is our role as practitioners, our role as workforce leads, our, our role as organisations, is about instilling health and well-being into patients, clients and customers. And obviously we're very committed to that. And it all kind of leads to that active environment as well. The whole multitude, the whole system working really succinctly together so we can support that framework, you know, kind of moving forward. Where we come into Play, certainly with the recovery and reinvention is the retrain and the reactivate and obviously Maddie will be putting together uh, some links for you further down the line on this presentation but essentially the retrain is a national lottery sport england and simsbury initiative that allows you as an individual and a partnered organization to receive free funding to upskill yourselves in any sort of qualification or cpd uh, that you might want to successful applicants will be able to apply for training 
receive it from our SIMSMA recognized training providers. So in essence, if you're a personal trainer that wanted to become a group exercise instructor, you don't have the money or the feasibility to do that at the moment, my advice would be strongly recommended uh, to look at that retrain initiative uh, and make some applications to that on behalf of your organization and the workforce as well. Uh, the first phase of this retrain has expired, but we do have another one coming and we're really excited about it. So hopefully we'll be able to support a broad range of you individuals in the audience and obviously beyond as well with that. Uh, the Reactivate is free of charge. It's an app that we've put together. Obviously, there's a lot of kind of guidance, policies, procedures from the government, which I think sometimes have been quite difficult to understand, certainly with the return to work. It debugs that, you know, kind of question of what is it I need to do in my leisure centres? What is it I need to do in my facilities? What can I do as an individual to make myself COVID safe? This is all free of charge. We work with Future Active Workforce for this. I'm really honest with you, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It's something that I've had a look at as well. I warmly encourage you to get involved with that as part of that re recovery and reinvention that kind of protocol that we've got in line with this strategy. Connecting communities, like we've spoken about earlier in the presentation, it's networking, it's, it's giving you that platform to create really good connections, really healthy connections on an individual basis, on an organization basis as well. So you might want to connect with certain training providers. Please do, that's, that's what we're all about, is we want to create some really good opportunities for you to move your organization forward, really good opportunities for you to move forward as an individual. We warmly encourage you to make those connections as well. <laughs> and the positive experience is just a good example of the kind of population engagement that we work with. We work with higher education, further education, other training providers as well uh, to create these opportunities. So I guess those two, the connecting communities in light of those specific populations kind of work quite closely together. I think the question is less of, can we help? It's more how can we help? And we can do that with our kind of broad range of communities as well. Uh, with connecting health and well-being, we have a really good GP referral scheme, uh, technical specialisms as well, which I'll talk about in a couple of slides time. Um, we our chartered members, our chartered practitioners, we're looking at creating an opportunity for them to receive patients and, and kind of customers, clients from a, from a GP perspective. Um, previously, GPs have, have wanted to prescribe exercise to good quality practitioners. Sometimes it's been really difficult to understand their specialisms, what they do and how they do it. We're making that really simple now with our career development pathways. And hopefully as this presentation progresses, you'll be able to see exactly what that career pathway is and the opportunities that that presents itself as well. And when it comes to active environments, again, it's just us maximizing the quality of the sector and everyone in it. And the next slide will will kind of show you how that works typically. But the take home from this, this slide really is that you've got the backing, not just from Sport England, but from ourselves as well. See Sport England as those developing the strategy and see SIMSPA as that organization that's committed to putting the procedures in place to implement that strategy on a broad scale of the sector. And it's all there to support you and the people that you're working with. So if we look at what's probably the most important thing in sport physical activity generally, why we're all here, why we do our work day in, day out, it's about engaging the public in sport and physical activity to lead healthy, um, you know, kind of well-balanced lives moving forward on a physical, psychological uh, level as well. Our partnership types will create these opportunities for you as well. But I want you to really emphasize that actually it's the customers, it's the clients at the center of everything we do. Um, and therefore the workforce is the most crucial thing uh, for the entire SIMSPA framework. So these partnership types that you've got here are all key methods of support that you'll have available to you throughout that SIMSPA framework. So we've got employer partners, your leisure facilities, your active partnerships, your kind of operators, the key players in the sector, those experts of best quality practice. And that's quite a diverse partner range. Um, and I imagine there'll be a lot of organizations and individuals within this organization that will kind of fit that mold, if you like. It's those that have got examples of best practice. You see day in, day out what the sector's all about. You know what high quality personal training is, for example. You know what high quality coaching is. You probably know what poor quality coaching is as well. You've got really good experience understanding the two. The employer partners are so important when it comes to us shaping our professional standards and shaping that quality of the sector as well. Our employers link really heavily to the training providers. That's probably the strongest link between the two uh, kind of cohorts of partner that we have within the organization. Our training providers ultimately are those that develop the training that meets the needs of those skill sets. So the workforce of an employer might have certain things that they want to achieve. We want five personal trainers. We want six group exercise instructors. We want our managers to be outstanding. It's our training providers that will obviously implement those standards 
within you. The reason our training providers are so reliable is because they're doing everything in line with the professional standards. And we'll talk about what those are in a moment. Um, kind of professionalizing and regulating all of that underneath are your rewarding organizations. So I imagine you'll know the names Active IQ, YMCA, and um, these sorts of organizations will regulate qualifications. And what we mean by that is they'll take a look at what the professional standards are for the sector. Uh, we'll identify exactly what's needed for a very good personal trainer and they will map their training identically across to those standards so it's got a simsper badge on it or an award and organization badge on it i can say with a, a huge degree of confidence that that training is very relevant for what you want it to be so my advice would be always look for those badges always look for those associations because that's what high quality training is and our higher education programs as well is that you know, we've got loads of people in our sector that have done degrees, that are considering doing degrees, considering doing higher, further education um, and training in, within that mould as well. Previously, it's been very difficult um, for graduates to be employable in sport and physical activity. It's always been a vocational qualification that they've needed, personal trainer qualification, gym instructor, etc. We're tailoring degree programmes now. So the graduates are directly employable the day they graduate. So they'll do their personal training, within their undergraduate study. Their masters in sports science and biomechanics might be applicable to certain job roles within the sector. It's all there to, to increase the opportunity of work within a very talented cohort of individuals. And if, if higher education, further education is something you want to consider down the line, those opportunities and availabilities are there now with our higher and further education partners. And the key feature is they all connect really well together is ultimately the employers, those with the workforce, the experts in practice will have really high quality individuals working for them because of the training providers and the award and organisations. And they can continue to develop themselves as well with the higher education routes as well, should they wish to. The way the way we see it is that Active Surrey is, is, is so important when it comes to kind of bridging the gap of employers and training providers. Obviously, today, um, we're, we're kind of here as, as, as a training provider. You're going to get Simsba recognized CPD points for today's webinar. And that's been set up for you by Active Surrey to increase that opportunity for you uh, to practice in line with the sector. But Active Surrey is also an outstanding employer partner as well, is that you'll receive discounts into Simsba membership. And we'll talk about what those opportunities are as we go forth. But the key thing is that if we're going to instill high quality life in customers, clients and members, we have to support the workforce as well. So please know that you are really well supported with everything that we do, uh, not just from ourselves here at Simsbo, but Active Surrey as well. So uh, whatever it is that you want to do and develop and support within the sector, we're here to help you to achieve that as well. So when it comes to professionalizing the sector, and hopefully this is where the presentation will really start to kind of take some practical um, kind of elements of understanding for you and you'll be able to see hopefully where your workforce is in terms of their career development where you as an individual might also be as well and it hopefully will translate and you know allow you to understand really succinctly what you can do with your career moving forward and it's all developed off professional standards and essentially what they are is kind of the written requirements for all job roles within sport and physical activity so i always use personal training as a good example of this so when we look at the concept of a personal trainer, there's certain criteria that a personal trainer has to meet. They have to know their anatomy, their physiology, their business acumen, the way they communicate to clients, their abilities to translate complex information and manage time, et cetera, et cetera. It's all written and all developed in the standards. We're simple, we publish those standards, but we can't do that without you guys. You're the experts in the field. You know exactly what good quality practice is and what poor quality practice is. These are the standards for your sector. These are the framework for your training. We want to make sure that you're inputting on them. So as a partner of ours, uh, you'll have that opportunity to input into those professional standards when they come up for renew uh, and review. And that generally takes place annually as well. So if you're sat there now thinking about what you think a personal trainer or group exercise instructor should be, let us know. We want to hear from you. That's, that's what we do here as an organisation. We want to shape the sector uh, through the sector's views and what you want it to be. The training is then mapped to those professional standards. So we would have a conversation with Active IQ and say, look, these are the new personal trainer requirements. These are the changes we've made from last year based on what the sector wants them to be. They incorporate them within their training. The individuals then enroll on that training and they receive really relevant, high quality training that's got a strong degree of accuracy associated to it as well. And those standards generally can be vocational. Uh, so personal trainer, for example, we've also got standards for managers, swimming teachers, but they can also be a population specific 
um, standards as well. So going back to that Sport England strategy of connecting communities and creating those individual opportunities, hopefully you can see there is that we've got some really tailored uh, professional standards incorporated in place. And the reason we do that is to make sure that you have a really good understanding of what you can do in the sector. If you're a personal trainer and you want to go into uh, working with children zero to five years, the opportunity to do that is there now more than ever has been. And it's there because of these professional standards. And hopefully this will kind of wrap it all in quite nicely together is, is it is an opportunity to specialise. So if we look at what we see the sector as at this moment in time, you've got your five sub disciplines, if you like, of sport and physical activity from exercise and fitness right the way through to health and well-being. What I want you to see here within those facets is almost a career pathway that's embedded naturally within those individual sub disciplines. So if we look at exercise and fitness, the level two fitness instructor is probably the place where most people will start. They might develop their training, education and learning. It creates the opportunity to become a level three personal trainer, a level three group exercise instructor. And generally speaking, that, that kind of career pathway has then gone into the management of facilities or they've specialised themselves as an exercise coach as well. But it's typically been within that exercise and fitness. One challenge we've always found in the sector up to this point is the ability to move across different disciplines. It's, it's difficult. It's been difficult for a long period of time. My example is, is probably a good one, is I graduated from Loughborough with a sports science degree and wanted to go into, you know, kind of personal training and fitness, found it particularly difficult to do so without a vocational qualification. I immediately found myself on that exercise and fitness kind of career, you know, kind of pathway, which is a really rewarding pathway um, for a lot of individuals. And I certainly enjoyed my time. When it came to becoming a, what I really wanted to do was to be a cancer rehab instructor. So right across to the health and well-being Facet, I had to repeat a lot of what I'd done in my fitness instructor and personal trainer qualifications just to become a cancer rehab instructor. I was redoing my physiology. I was redoing my business acumen. I was redoing my psychology and um, elements within that qualification. The way we see it now is that the training will be broken down really succinctly so we can identify what it is that you want, what it is that you've got, and what we can do to support you to get there. And essentially what that does is it creates a broad range of opportunities for you to move across these disciplines, taking what you know, taking what you understand and just adding to that a separate value as well. So let's say you've got an individual there that's a personal trainer. They take a particular fancy to enhancing the, you know, the kind of sporting performance of elite athletes. They can go into performance sport. We identify what it is that they want to achieve. We identify what knowledge they have and what knowledge they need, linking them with the right training provider to create those opportunities. They might then have a look and think, I want to go into cardiac rehab. Great, they can go into health and well-being. We can do exactly the same kind of structure there to create those opportunities. They then might want to go into coaching uh, and you know, coaching young athletes. The population and a specification of the professional standard allows them to do that. They might then want to manage leisure operations as well. So all of a sudden, you've got a personal trainer that specializes in elite performance. They specialize in cardiac rehab coaching as well, and they can manage a facility, i.e. they're a chartered individual, they're ready to go. It creates more opportunities for them as an individual, but a lot more opportunities for the workforce and that organisation as well, is all of a sudden you've got the workforce that's got a multitude of different uh, kind of qualifications and technical specialisms. It creates more opportunities for your clients and customers and a greater uh, kind of reputational um, aspect for the organisation as well of, of employing the absolute best individuals within the sector that cover a broad range of areas within their profession as well. So when we kind of tie all this together, this should in essence serve as the kind of chartered pathway, I suppose, uh, and that specialism pathway is that we've got those professional standards, i.e. the rules and the written requirements for job roles. We've got the training opportunities that you have available to you through the Sims for Academy, which is on, uh, you know, kind of specific to the membership that we have here at Sims for 1300 CBD courses that come with your membership. You've also got your training providers there that, you know, if you wanted a conversation said that cancer rehab is what I want to do, you can speak to your training provider and, and obviously enroll through on those courses as well. So you've got all the training that you could possibly need to specialise. Uh, that's ultimately what that area is there to do, um, is that you've got rules, training, and then the scope to specialise as well. And the more specialisms you get, the more experience that you have within those respective specialisms, the higher quality of an individual ultimately that person is and in essence in a nutshell that is your chartered member um is your chartered member is an outstanding advocate of sport and physical activity the career pathway is always working towards that chartered might not be for everyone but specialisms might 
um, becoming outstanding at what you do as a personal trainer with different elements of CPD. All of that structure, everything that you want to do in the sector fits into this mold here on this slide. And it works backwards as well. So let's take the chartered member. They're probably a chartered member because they specialize in, in a multitude of different areas to the bottom right. The reason they probably specialize is because they've done the right training at the right time with Sims for training providers and the academy as well on the, on the you know, kind of top right. And the reason they've done the right training is because that training is in line with the professional standards and it all links quite succinctly together. Hopefully you can see there exactly what a career pathway looks like in sport and physical activity. Previous challenges of specialising have been very difficult. They're not now. Those opportunities are available to you. And they're available through the Simsper portal and the Simsper platform as well. So when we look at this from a, a practical element, if you like, let's have a look at the personal trainer. There's certain things within that standard that that personal trainer needs to adhere to. Client motivation, physiology, nutrition, exercise programming, et cetera, et cetera. That individual is in line as, you know, with those standards as a personal trainer. They might then want to qualify in different areas. They've got their awarded bodies, active IQs. They've got their CPD, Les Mills, for example. They've also got different types of qualifications that are regulated, right foundation and their uh, kind of cancer cardiac rehab um, kind of qualifications as well. They might have the academy module that fits the needs of their client motivation. They can that, you know, essentially whatever training there is that that individual needs, we've got the opportunity to create that for you. They do that, they then become specialised, they're a PT working in cancer rehab, elite, elite sport, strength and conditioning, exercise referral. And that in a nutshell would, would create the opportunity for them to be a chartered activity and health practitioner. So you're probably asking yourself the question now of what is it that I want to do? Have a look at this structure, have a look at this framework. My advice would be do exactly what, what I did um, initially was ask yourself the question of what you want to do, um, highlight what training you feel you need to and have a chat to us. Have a, have a conversation with us. We can, we can steer you in the right direction of what it is that you want it to be, whether you're an individual, whether you're a workforce wanting to support and develop your partners and, and your individual members of staff. This structure, this framework is there to allow you to get the most out of your experience in the sector. And we're here to help you with that moving forward. So when it comes to kind of the additional benefits, obviously what we've covered at the moment is the kind of hardcore what we do here at Simspa, the professional standards, the chartered body, the Sport England strategy and how that implements into the kind of career development pathway that you've just seen. But we do want to invest in organisations, individuals, you know, kind of individuals as a, as a person, as well as a practitioner and a manager and then organisations, we want to reward them for, for practising in line with these standards as well. So we have member and partner benefits additional, and it ultimately fits across four main facets. And it's all about recognition as an outstanding advocate, an outstanding individual or an outstanding organization within the sector. Being ahead, being connected, ultimately being the difference and being rewarded as well. And I'll explain what those are um, in the next couple of slides. But essentially what this is all about is, is supporting you beyond that kind of career training, support, guidance and policies that we have here at Simsper and making sure that everybody has an outstanding experience uh, with us and, and what we do. So when we look at connectivity, it's probably one of our biggest aspects is that we want for a partner to, to allow them to connect to other partners, other organisations. Obviously, connecting with your active partnership, in my opinion, is probably the most important step that an organisation can take within sport and physical activity. It adopts a very similar structure to what we have here at Simsper and um, it's it's massively important. We've seen organisations go from strength to strength with their active partnership. Employer partners, uh, you know, connecting with them, other workforces, how are they doing things? What is it that they do well? If you're an organisation that wants to grow, speak to some organisations that have gone through that process as well. You want to also do mentoring and coaching as an example of best practice. We employ you to do so as well. Education and training partners, in, in my opinion, this is one of the most productive connections that you could possibly make is that your workforce will need certain things. They will need certain things to train and develop and ultimately stay with you as an organization. Connect to the training providers, have conversations with them as an organization. You'll have a page on our platform in the same way that all organizations do. It's kind of a little bit like LinkedIn for sport and physical activity. Connect with as many people as you want to. That's what it's there for. And obviously we have those in person, albeit when we we can return to that element of normality. Uh, networking events, webinars, events, connect to as many people as possible because it does serve as a really good example of best practice for you as an organisation. For the individual, you've got that connectivity to your employer. So the employer will have a database on our platform of all the training, qualifications, CPD that you as an individual have done. 
it gives you that opportunity then to have a conversation with your employer about what you might want to do in the future. That's where that connection to your training provider comes into play. Because if you want to specialize in a certain area, you can have a look and explore your options with the training providers that we work with. Obviously with your active partnership is hugely important as well. There's loads of benefits as you will know uh, to ben, you know, kind of connect in with an individual to your active partnership and to industry experts as well. If you're anything like myself, I kind of, I wanted to be a chartered practitioner and I'm certainly working towards that. It's a really good opportunity for you to connect to chartered practitioners, talk about their process, what they've done, how their career has served them, how they got to where they have got to, coaching, mentoring, it's, it's hugely important. That connectivity is massive with what we do. And that's an additional benefit to Simspan. When it comes to the reward concept of what we do, in terms of a partner, well, you've got discounts for all of your workforce to join um, Simspa as a member. So we look at it from an employer partner perspective. There'll always be a percentage discount for you to join um, Simspa and for your individual members to join there as well. We want to make sure the employer partner is easy to access as well. So it's free of charge to the organisation, no affiliation fee associated with that partnership type. The only cost is associated with the members that you want to bring into Simspa. And we're happy to have that conversation with you, to, you know, kind of further down the line. And if you are an employer partner and you want to become a training provider as well, we will skip that initial fee um, of £300 to become a training provider as well. So training providers alone, just so you know, it's £300 to join as a training provider. And then for every course that's wished to endorse, it's £300 again. If you're an employer partner initially, you will skip that £300 initial fee because we want to support you going kind of above and beyond uh, to support that respective workforce with maybe internal training and deliver as well. When it comes to the member, um, as you can see, we, this is just a cohort of examples that we've got of the many supplier partners that we work with. They've got specific discounts and we tailor these directly to membership categories as well, is that we want to create as many opportunities for that practitioner that manager to develop professionally also personally as well. So the Westfield Health, is, for example, is, is a good opportunity. You can discuss anonymous symptoms with a GP. You can talk through any kind of um, worries or concerns physically, psychologically in an anonymous space. You've got 24-7 access to a GP as well, which is I've certainly benefited from that during COVID. Um, I think like a lot of people, uh, the world went online. I had conversation with my GP, booked into an optician overnight. Um, I now need glasses. Uh, it's one of those things. It's, it's a really good benefit. I definitely advise you to, to utilise it as well. Individuals will have percentages off their national governing body uh, if they did want to join their memberships as well. We work with the MD UK, uh, which has been really beneficial for um, our membership type in terms of national, you know, kind of group based exercise. And then you've got discounts as well from you kind of commercial aspects. You've got my protein uh, discounts off there already. Pretty impressive kind of you know, kind of discounts on their products and services. Uh, any discounts on some courses? We've got some training providers, which quite a lot of training providers that will offer unique offers to Simspa members and Simspa partners. And then obviously PT Hub as well, uh, the opportunity to build your kind of online business as well. Loads of initiatives like that. My advice would be, should you wish to come on as a member, is to explore these options uh, for yourself and just see what you've got available to you. We want to make sure we're consistently adding to these as well. So we do have a supplier partner pilot uh, that's currently running at the moment to broaden those opportunities that you have with your percentage discounts. When it's coming to, to kind of being ahead from a partner perspective, the biggest one, particularly the last kind of 10 to 12 months, has been that COVID guidance, is that we've known that sometimes when Boris or whoever it's been has, has announced what guidance and structures need to take place, it's really confusing. Um, our job is to work quite closely to uh, DCMS and, and other kind of government organisations to really simplify what that means for organisations within sport and physical activity. Going back to the um, reactivate kind of platform that we've got, it's translated knowledge in there as well. So we want to make sure we take that guidance and we're making it applicable for you as an organisation and an individual. So it's really well understood and you're supported with that. In retrain, reactivate, obviously organisations can make applications to receive funding for qualifications for CPD. As I say, the second phase of that is well on its way. Reactivate is something that will consistently be available to you as well. I believe there'll be links going into the chat box for you to explore that as well. And if you do have any questions, just give us a shout. We're really keen to support you with those. And then bulletins, newsletters, sector updates. We want to make sure our partners are the first to know uh, of the major changes that happen within sport and physical activity. Ultimately, if your organisation is well informed, it puts you in a pretty good place moving forward uh, to, you know, to kind of to make some really proactive uh, 
uh, action, if you like, in terms of any changes that apply to you as an organization. From a member perspective, they'll receive role specific research to inform their practice. So this is something that I've loved um, as a, for the practitioner within me is to identify in higher education, further education research. I think when you go on to Google, you can get some really good articles on what to do in your practice, but there's some very unreliable ones as well, particularly around kind of nutrition and those facets that are very specialized con you know, kind of concepts and topics of discussion. It's an opportunity there for you to really understand what the evidence is saying, um, what the you know, kind of organizations and the implementations from a higher education institute uh, are advising to be done. And you can just practice in line with those as well. So we translate that information really understandably uh, for you to create those opportunities. You're obviously getting access to the best quality training as well. With your individual memberships, you have access to the Sims for Academy. Sims for Academy is there to kind of specifically bridge the gaps between what you'll learn in your qualifications and how you practice in the real world. How good are your communication skills? How good are your leadership skills? We've got a management academy embedded within that as well. So any interested managers, I think that would be really applicable to you as well. And then the chartered pathway is, is quite a useful tool as well. Obviously, something we've explained formally in this presentation is that we can support you every step of the way uh, to get into that level as well. And then finally, it's about being the difference. So from a partner perspective, professional development boards and professional development committees in the sector to really feed into what they are uh, and really feed into those professional standards and consistently making sure they're relevant. As a partner, you'll be invited uh, to apply to, to, to join those professional standard committees. But either way, we want to hear from you. If there's any insight, advice or opportunities that you've got or certain things that you want to see happen in the sector, let us know. It's our job to make it happen. Uh, and it's something that's really you know, kind of important to us as well. Um, in terms of sector insight, you've got the opportunity to present that, um, whether it's to myself, whether it's to Maddie, the partnerships team, whoever it is within the Simsper framework is if you've got advice, insights or expertise within the sector and you believe that that needs to be carried forward into the big picture of what we do, we want to hear from you. We're, we're here to regulate the sector, but we can't do it without brilliant people that are in the sector ultimately. So the, the autonomy is in your hands and we're, and we're very much there to facilitate that supportive mechanism. And from a member perspective, voting rights and professional standard inputs. When we look at voting rights, it's about employing the right sort of people for professional development boards, professional development committees, so you've got the right people implementing on your sector. And as well as that, from an individual level, if, if there's things that you see within the professional standards, if there's things that you see in your profession day in, day out, let us know. We want to hear from, We want to hear about it. It's, it's something that we're massively keen on here is, is insight and advice from all different facets of sport and physical activity, because that's how we make the sector better, is, is implementing into exactly what you want it to be. So that's something that's, that's very, very important. I will just say again that the retrain um, initiative, the government, the you know kind of lottery funding, is a really good opportunity. It's something that certainly, if I was an employer, I'd be I'd be starting to think about actually what are the skills gaps within my workforce? What can I do to support them, uh, and how can we work with that with the with the funding as well? Um, if you have got questions with that, it's usually best to to kind of contact myself, contact Maddie as well, and we'll we'll have our details on there. Um, but hopefully the link that Maddie's popped into the chat box will make you know, really good sense in terms of that opportunity that you've got available to you. And exactly the same, Reactivate is, is huge. It's about being COVID safe. Upon completion, whether it's an individual or an organisation, you'll have certificates that are proving you being safe to work um, within sport and physical activity. Members, customers, clients can see this and they can just feel really confident that they're in the best possible hands because the right training has been done in line with the right guidance as well. So reactivate, retrain, really important initiatives that I definitely implore you to have a look at. Uh, and if there's anything that we can do to support you with that, just let us know and we'll be happy to help. Um, but other than that, it's, it's about getting involved, I guess. So just for some kind of background information, uh, from an organization perspective, employer partners, no affiliation fee associated with that. The only thing that we look to do and achieve is, is a target of members that you'd like to support uh, with Simspa. Um, and the membership, it's as much our target as it is yours as well. We want to give you a range of autonomy within that as well, um, selecting individuals within the workforce that really succinctly apply uh, for Sims for membership, and those that would really benefit from it. But it's a very, very diverse partnership with multiple different types of organisation associated with that employer partner. So have a look at it and, and see what you think. If you need any more information about it, obviously we can speak about that beforehand as well. 
The training provider side of things, uh, £300 to join unless you're an employer partner, which will waiver that £300 cost. And then for every course that you wish to endorse, if it's a CPD course that you've done yourself, um, obviously it's, it's £300 per endorsement. But if you deliver on behalf of an awarding organisation, there won't be a charge associated because it already maps to the professional standards. For an individual, you can join through your active partnership for active, sorry, and some really good opportunities that, that are available to you with that. And I'd certainly advise that as well. Um, if you are an individual considering your next steps with SIMSPA is practitioners, affiliates, students and graduates. It typically starts at £30, but with Surrey, you'll you'll receive the, the full 20 percent discount, which is the maximum discount we can award. Uh, so £24 with that one. Pretty, pretty kind of good value for money, considering the member benefits that will be associated with that as well. And any manager members, usually £140, that's slightly higher due to the professional standard committees and, and the autonomy associated with that as well. But again, a 20% discount on that, looking at around about £112 for the year uh, with that one. So you're well looked after, you're well supported uh, with us in terms of the pricing structures. But if you do want to have further conversations with us about the nitty gritty details of that, just give us a shout and we're happy to coordinate that with you. But other than that, don't, don't be shy, get in touch. We're happy to help. Um, so for partnership inquiries, typically with Simspa, um, contact me, uh, drop me an email, you know, drop me a call if you need to as well. Uh, book an appointment with me if, if you want to. So usually I'll keep my Friday mornings open uh, for any partners that wish to, or any individuals that wish to just have a drop-in call. Um, 10 a.m., 12 p.m. on Fridays, I'm usually very available with that one. If you've got questions or anything you want to run through, just drop me a call uh, and we'll go through it. It's not a problem at all. And then obviously from, from the Active Surrey side of things, just give Laura a shout. Um, email is on their phone number as well. Um, the two organisations, Active Surrey and Sims, have come together to support individuals and organizations you know kind of together so don't be shy um, and certainly get involved and, and get in touch with us if you've got any questions or want to go and go through anything i uh, would be you know more than happy to help on that basis um but other than that i think that's that's pretty much everything really in terms of what i want to talk to you about today so thanks for your time we've covered 45 minutes bang on actually so if you've got any questions we've got opportunities for them now um, but other than that, you know, I really appreciate your time and, you know, kind of best to look with everything moving forward, I suppose. So I will unshare my screen, Laura, and then.